the risk of airborne transmissions of diseases such as tuberculosis in public spaces can now be significantly reduced. The CSIR has developed an electronic device that monitors indoor carbon dioxide levels and generates an alarm when corrective action is needed. It indicates when ventilation has to be improved or the number of occupants in an indoor area reduced to minimize the health impact of airborne disease transmission. Essentially, TB is one of the biggest challenges, TB transmission, TB disease in South Africa. Challenge to healthcare, it has a huge burden on the healthcare system, a huge social and economic burden. TB transmission happens primarily as we understand it in spaces where we have large numbers of people in congregate settings, waiting areas, uh, such as in healthcare. If you look at the disease transmission dynamic model, what we find is that the number of people in our waiting areas affects the, the rate of transmission. If we can reduce the number of people uh, in our waiting areas or increase the ventilation rates in these areas, we can uh, greatly reduce uh, the transmission rates. The new device measures the infection risk in real time, using carbon dioxide as a proxy for the transmission risk. The device determines the differential between indoor and outdoor carbon dioxide. The device has an audible and visual alarm. The visual alarm has just a little LED, which goes from green through orange to red, uh, depending on the level of risk. The combination of CSIR skills and experience in building design for healthcare and sensor technology contributed to the creation of the novel, robust device. The CSR has done a lot of work with, um, with sensor technology, both in the development of new sensing technologies as well as sensor integration in things such as the CO2 platform that we have developed. So one of the considerations is that we might be in environments where network connection doesn't have a very strong signal strength or environments where there might be loss of power for up to a couple of days. So both of those led us to including batteries um, on the device which can last for up to five days as well as a SIM 808 module which has a lot of debugging software to essentially make sure that even in signal poor environments that those messages can still get sent across to the correct people. The device has been used both as a research tool to monitor carbon dioxide levels in facilities and as an operational tool having been installed in the outpatient departments of two South African facilities. We've had quite a lot of interest and an operational level uh, in facilities. So when we do our risk assessments in the depart various departments of health and various health facilities, we use this tool to do an assessment for ourselves to, to see whether, what the status of the facility is. And when we explain the, the application and the potential of the device, we have a very good reception from the facility managers and the IPC, the Infection Prevention Control uh, Managers, on how this tool can really help them.